was a, oh no you were getting uh, there we go a little uh, emotional there uh -huh. what was that about well at the end uh, I have a great history uh, with the Freelo family we go way back and just the fact that she's just such a tough lady and just is um, she encompasses the city of New Orleans. She, she loves the city, loves the culture, and the fact that she was willing to buy into what I'm going to do at University of New Orleans with men's basketball, just, uh, I mean, it really caught me. And uh, it caught me today. I didn't expect it to, but it really caught me today. So. You mentioned that this was a, a lifelong dream, and it said it again there in the, mm -hmm. in the press release. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you to take this next step in your career? Well, I, I think everybody matures and moves on to the next step. Up and to be able to do it in a state that I have such a great passion for. Uh, to be here 11 years, this is where I want to live, this is where my wife and I want to be. We want to begin a family, raise a family here, and really put roots here. And, you know, just my knowledge and talent base of the state, uh, of the talent base that it has, is, is where I'm comfortable and where I'm home. Yeah, I really believe you're only going to be successful where you're comfortable. And Louisiana is where I'm comfortable, and this is where I want to be, and hope I never have to leave. What, what are some of the difficulties in just taking over this program mm -hmm. when it went from D1 to D3 and now to D2? Okay, the, I think more than anything right now, the biggest difficulty is education and just telling people exactly where we're at, where we stand. I think once people get a feel for what we have, UNO has a great run of assets in the Division II game. When you look at Lakefront Arena as an asset, when you look at the campus as an asset, when you look at the city as an asset, it's hard to say what other Division II schools in the country can compete with that a, a, as a total package. And so for us, initially, we've got to get the word out of, of where we are and that we've rebuilt this program and that we're going to be building a Division II, hopefully national power, uh, within five years. Talk about bringing the city out back to the lakefront. Mm -hmm. what, what's the plan? What's your sales pitch? I, I, I could tell you that there's a 20-page PowerPoint, but more importantly, it's getting out, shaking hands, making connections. People are only going to come up here when they're engaged. And they're going to come up here when they have a vested interest in, in the product. And I think it's my job as a head coach to get them interested not only in myself, but more importantly in our student athletes and what the team has to offer them from an entertainment value, from a connection in, and being part of what we want to do and what we want to build. How do you feel that going D2 will affect you recruiting? I, th I see it as the best of both worlds. For a guy that loves the state and loves recruiting this city, for me, it's the best of both worlds. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get the best that don't want to leave home, and I'm going to get the best that are ready to come home. And so, for me, I don't know that it could be a better situation recruiting wise. I don't think it's going to affect us at all from the end of drawing a great pool of players here that are going to buy into what we do in our style of play and how we want to play. How, how much does it help that you came from an in-school state, so you've already got familiarity with coaches? And I, I, I think it's a it's a great value. I mean, obviously, I've recruited the city of New Orleans before with having guys from John Air, having guys from St. Augustine, but also being able to say I've signed guys from Zawali High School, I've signed guys from Sibley, Louisiana, and be able to say that I know all these ins and outs and these backwoods corners of the state that a lot of people haven't gone to, and that's what we built our program and that's what we built our run of success on over 11 years uh, at Northwestern State. Initially, what do you think will probably be your, your biggest challenge? I think just organizationally, initially, just getting in and getting a handle because it's July. You know, it's almost July and, and not coming in in April or May and being able just to get everything going as far as the, the ideas and the, the things that we want to get off the ground immediately. Uh, but more than anything, my number one concern is our current student athletes that are here, taking care of them, make sure they're enrolled, make sure they're engaged and ready to go in the program, and then I'm going to address filling the rest of our roster and getting out and getting the best student athletes we can to, uh, to get ready for this 11-12 season. You've been an assistant for a while. What made now the time to kind of branch out and be the head coach? U UNO. I mean, simply stated, UNO. That, that the opportunity to come to a nationally recognized university in arguably, in my opinion, the best city in America and uh, you know to be able to do all the things that come with it, to be able to go to French Quarter Fest, to be able to have a, a high quality of life for my wife and I, but then also, I mean, a little selfishly from a basketball perspective, to have a hotbed of basketball right here in the backyard that I know we can draw from and build a product that everybody in the city will love.